Hello, I'm Calm. Welcome to another video. I've had a slight break as I've had a recent problem with the Windows 10 download. Also, I've downloaded Destiny 2, which was free, so I've been playing that quite a lot, to be honest. There was a few problems with Destiny 2, um, which I've managed to overcome, so I might do a video on that in the future. I'm not sure. Right now, I want to speak to you about three builds, three budget builds, three complete budget builds. We have a lot of people building on YouTube and the ones I've watched never seem to advise on whole builds, just the basic components of the PC. They don't give us an inkling of what else to look for, leaving us with, okay, I've built a PC. How about monitor, keyboard, mouse, Wi-Fi, more storage, upgrades? Well, in this video, I want to talk about all of these things. I have built one of these systems with and for my son. I have captured all this information, so I might do a couple of videos or possibly one complete long video showing you how to build a PC for yourself. I will follow up with further videos just showing you software installation and such like. So don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification if you want to follow me in doing so. So you can do this for yourself. I do generally go into a lot of detail so if you're unsure of what goes where in this case I think this will be a bonus even if the video may be long. Links to all these three builds are below in the description. They are my affiliate links which takes you to my Amazon page. Using these links means I will get a small commission if you decide to buy after using them. You do not get charged any extra for using these. However, this will help and inspire me to continue to put these types of videos out there. Information videos for you to make your own minds up. Let's get to it then. So if we follow the mainstream and just talk in a basic PC, this first budget build can be built for under £340. As some people keep their PCs downstairs near to their internet connection, so we just plug into their router, no need for Wi-Fi. Some people have their PCs upstairs, so instead of installing cables and things, you can access your broadband by adding a Wi-Fi card. If you add the Wi-Fi card, this price of the basic build is just under £370. If you want the budget A PC, including monitor, keyboard, mouse that I've recommended, the price is around £480. Add the Wi-Fi and it's just over £510. Not bad for a current system, however, if you are willing to have a slightly smaller monitor, keep watching, as if you choose this, the price will be under £500 complete. I will get to this later. I do encourage you though to carry on watching the whole video, as slight changes here and there can improve this build considerably. Right, let's talk CPU, the brain of the computer. For build A, I have chosen the Ryzen 3 2200G. It has integrated graphics, which means it has inbuilt graphics inside the chip, so you do not need a separate graphics card. It's got Vega 8 graphics, to be precise. The CPU runs at 3.5 MHz base and goes all up to speeds of 3.7 GHz. The higher the speed, the faster it processes information. It has four cores and four threads. The more cores and threads a CPU has, the more processes it can do at the same time. Just remember though, cores are more important than threads. Threads act like artificial cores. Better to have though than not. The price difference between build A and B is around £42. The only change I have made to this build is an upgrade to the CPU, to the Ryzen 5 2400G. It has Vega 11 graphics, which is an upgrade to the Ryzen 3's 8. Higher is better in this case. The Ryzen 5 2400G also has 4 cores and 8 threads, which is 4 extra threads, more processing power. It also operates at higher speeds, 3.6 MHz to 3.9 MHz. So for the sake of £40 or £40-odd, pounds, I think it's worth the upgrade, especially if you want to play more demanding games. My son likes to play Overwatch, Dota 2, Skyrim. Uh, the Ryzen 3 build would do all of these fine, but the Ryzen 5 build will do it a lot better and more demanding games too. If you want a great budget 1080p gaming PC, then keep watching. Before we get into that though, let's talk about the basic components within these two builds besides the CPU. Motherboard, key fact. Using these two CPUs and the integrated graphics through this motherboard, the speed is limited to output into the monitor to 60 MHz. The resolution is lower through the DVI port, so connect to the monitor with the HDMI cable for the best performance. 
buying a quick refresh rate monitor is nice, but it will be limited to these speeds through this motherboard, regardless of what money you spend. You could buy a 60 MHz monitor to bring the cost down, but to be honest, this Bank GL2580H has a great response time, has built-in speakers, has a good refresh rate of 83 kHz, which is what it's listed as anyway, has a 4 star rating, and for £117 seems a steal for good 1080p gaming. If you are thinking of upgrading later on, this little bit extra now, with the speed of the monitor, is worth investing in. However, keep watching for another even better recommendation as I found a monitor that will work even better with this system for not much more. This motherboard is a Micro ATX form factor. It has 4 RAM slots so if you want to buy 2 4GB sticks now like I have, you can add another 2 later on if you want to upgrade to 16. It's a growth option that other motherboards with just 2 RAM slots won't be able to give you. If you wanted to increase from 8 to 16 with a 2 slot board, you would have to buy a separate 2x8 GB kit. This motherboard has two PCIe x16 slots. The top one is the quickest. This is the best one if you're going to install a graphics card, if you want to install one. It also has one single PCIe slot in between these two, which I am going to use to install a Wi-Fi card. It also has an M.2 port, which is NVMe compatible. I'm going to make use of this because I've got an MX500 M.2 which I bought previously. Check out one of my previous videos on a comparison of the MX500's M.2 format and the SATA format. The motherboard has various USB ports accessed at the back and the sound this motherboard kicks out is pretty good. It sounds okay on my son speakers. I find it really hard to find another case of this build quality for this price. I paid £36. If you know of a similar case for a similar price please let me know in the comments section below. It has one USB 2, one USB 3 port, mic, earphone socket, power, reset button and power LED on the front panel. It also has interchangeable decor in two places on the front there too. You have the choice of swapping these out from red to either black or white. The case is coated on the inside so it looks quality, it doesn't look or feel cheap. It also has two drive cages for hard drives and you can mount your SSD on the top of this. Just remember if you're going to use the drive cages for 2.5 inch drives that you must buy a special mounting kit for this. There's a viewing window on the side of the case so you can see all the internal parts so make sure you have tidy cables once you've finished your build. If you want to add a bit of lighting you can. The motherboard does support the RGB strips. The motherboard itself only illuminates in one small part so you may want to choose a different motherboard if you're going for that RGB look. I'm not really into RGB, that's a decision for you. It comes with a rear fan and you have the option of installing two further 120mm fans at the front, RGB ones if you wish. There's room for a thin radiator but we're not going down that route for a budget build. RAM, 8GB, good brand, decent speed for the price. For a budget build this is enough. I wouldn't go any lower than 8GB though. And to be honest, I prefer 16 if I was gaming. As mentioned before, at least with this motherboard, you have the option to add another two 4GB sticks. When buying RAM, check the motherboard site for a list of compatible RAM kits. These would have already been tested with the motherboard. Not all kits run well on all boards, particularly with the new Ryzen CPUs. Power supply. For a budget build, this is a good make, nice price for performance, 80 plus certified. It has more power than we need right now, but we can use this down the line for upgrades, for adding more storage, graphics card perhaps. All the cables are already attached to the PSU or power supply unit. You can't take these off. The leads are clearly marked, but have multicolored sleeves and do not cover right to the end on some of the connectors. Why they are not fully covered in black sleeves is a mystery, but at the end of the day, these are cosmetic issues and do not affect the performance, which is what is important. Storage. Uh, I've chosen SSD for this, uh, Kingston 240GB, and it's under £30, which is a great price. In general, there's a huge performance increase with an SSD compared to a traditional hard disk drive, because there's no moving parts, it's a lot quicker. There are a lot of SSDs on the market to choose from, 
there is also a large amount of crap that's out there too. So choose wisely when shopping. Look at the reviews and the comparison tables. I have heard of some SSDs that have dodgy firmware on them, which tricks your operating system to see larger volume sizes than what they actually are. And you will only realize this once you've exceeded the volume size. And this is usually after the return window has closed. In 2019, I would not have anything else other than an SSD to install and run Windows on. You could choose to go with a smaller 120 gigabyte drive, but due to the minor price difference between them and the fact that you get double the space, I wouldn't. If you are just looking to go with Build A just for web surfing, then the smaller 120 gigabyte drive would make more sense. But as I said, for the small price difference and twice the storage space, I wouldn't. If you have a large games library, consider buying a hard disk drive to put your games on. This is what I have done with my system. I will get to this later on, but for now, I would not buy a hard disk drive and install and run Windows on it. There is such a great performance boost to your PC running Windows on an SSD. Trust me. Right, the monitor. We've briefly touched on this already, but Benk is a great make. It's a perfect size. One millisecond response time. HD display or 1080p. Inbuilt speakers listed at running at 83 kilohertz. As mentioned previously as well, if you are using the output from the motherboard, this will be limited to 60 megahertz. But still good to have that little bit of room, especially if you're thinking of upgrading down the line with a dedicated graphics card. I do have two other recommendations for monitors for you to consider, so keep watching. Keyboard and mouse. Right, I've not really heard of this mate before, but the features on this board seem fantastic for the price. And the mouse is 3200 DPI, bargain for this price, and RGB on both if you're looking into that, you RGB fans. This combo pack has 4 star rating, my son seems to like using them, so the response time must be good, otherwise he'd be moaning about it. Time will tell regarding durability though. They seem light but well made and they're well packaged. For those of you who like your keyboard to have that mechanical feel, I've listed an alternative keyboard and mouse combination, which is slightly cheaper. The mouse is a little less sensitive, but this pack does have a four and a half star rating, so up to you to decide. Just remember, the mechanical types are a lot louder than normal though. They are. Wi-Fi. It's not standard on all motherboards. Usually it is on the more expensive boards, so you need to check when you're purchasing your motherboard whether it's got Wi-Fi or not, or whether you actually need it. I have purchased this Wi-Fi card as it stood out from the rest because it's the same manufacturer as the motherboard. I thought, same make, less issues, right? Correct. My router is in one corner of the house and my son's PC is in the opposite corner upstairs and the connection between my router and my son's computer is fantastic. The PC couldn't be further away unless I put my son in the shed. The card supports 802.11a to c which is the industry standard of what we need. It has Bluetooth 2 if you want that. It also has a cute little aerial that's magnetized which is useful because it sticks on top and stays there. Build 3 and alternatives. The third build is based around 1080p gaming with smoother performance. To achieve this we need to get away from the integrated graphics. Therefore I've swapped the CPU out for the Ryzen 5 2600. It has 6 cores and 12 threads which is 2 more cores and 4 more threads than build B. It runs at 3.4 to 3.9 MHz which is a similar speed to build B but it's doing this on all those extra cores and threads. The graphics card I've chosen is the RX 580, the 8GB version, which is a good all-rounder price for performance wise. It will work great with this CPU at 1080p gaming and give you high detail for most current games. I've also increased the RAM size to 16GB. This puts the price of the PC to around 660 or 690 if you wish to add the Wi-Fi. I also suggest that you purchase a hard disk drive to put your games on. I recommend this 2TB drive for £50. It runs at 7200 RPM and is a good brand. I have the 3TB version in my current system. If you want the full build, including the Wi-Fi, it will be around £880. 
I do suggest an alternative monitor for the sake of another seven or eight pound, it cannot be ignored. This mo other monitor has very similar features, one millisecond response time, speakers, etc. But the most important thing is that it includes free sync, which means that the monitor and graphics card will synchronize for smoother gameplay and performance for this little price difference I think it's worth it. It would be the option that I would go for anyway. It also has a USB port and has a 4.5 star rating. I also discovered that they do the exact same monitor for a slightly smaller size 22 inch you could save yourself about £27. I wouldn't do this if I was going for the gaming system but for build A it would be something to consider. So if you did do this with the build A, this would bring this price for the full build under £500 complete. Build B would be around £530 complete with a smaller monitor. Yeah, all in. PC, monitor, keyboard, mouse. Personally, I would go with a larger Iliyama 24.5 inch. Those 2.5 inches make a difference. Oh, I almost forgot. Windows 10 Pro. I will leave a link in the description for another YouTuber's video where he goes through the purchase of an OEM license. This YouTuber himself is a good find. He runs his own PC business as well as his own channel with tons of videos, over 200,000 subscribers. But most importantly, I find him trustworthy. If you want to wait, I am going to buy a license for my son's Build B PC build. So I will do a video on that soon. Um, I want to do the build video first and then software installation later on so I'll have to be after this. I do hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget the links if you're thinking of buying or just want to check out the different builds. If you did find this video helpful or interesting show your appreciation by hitting the like button. Leave a comment below with any suggestions you may have. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I do have other things to offer. If you know of someone new to computers, point them in my direction. I have a few learning videos for people new to the scene. If you can, please share this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Calm, signing off. Have a good morning, afternoon or good evening. Farewell till next time. See you later.